So remember back to first semester calculus when we were doing things like this. We were taking a function f and we were told based on a, a graph of f, sketch a graph of f prime, the derivative of f. So we would think about the slope of f at various points and the value of the slope would become the value of my derived function. So uh, right here for example and right here my f graph has a slope of 0. So if I come down here to those corresponding points on the graph below, my derivative function will have to have a value of 0 at those points. So I can plot those points. And if I think about this first region here, the slope is very large and it gradually approaches 0 and reaches 0 right there. So my derivative graph down here has to start off with a high value and then head down towards 0 something like that. In this middle region right here the slope is 0, it becomes negative and then it becomes 0 again so my derivative graph is 0, it becomes negative and then goes back to 0 again. And this point right here where my original function is the steepest in the negative direction that corresponds to this point right here where my derivative function is the most negative. And then as we go on to the right here, you can see the slope here is 0 and then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So my derivative function starts off with a value of 0 right there and then gets larger and larger and larger. And if my original function here f is a cubic, then I end up with a parabola. But the point is that we can look at the slope of this curve at any point and produce the value of this curve and that's taking the derivative of the original function. Now in the same way what we're going to do now is that same process in reverse. If I imagine starting over here at 0 and taking a line and sweeping to the right, as I move to the right I sweep out some area under this graph and that area gets bigger as I move further to the right so if I move to the right on this graph we see the value of this graph increasing and then as I go through this point where this graph has a value of 0 this graph doesn't increase at all and where uh, in the middle section here where this graph is below the axis I'm accumulating negative area and this graph is going down and then as I continue to the right beyond this point I accumulate more area so my value for a goes back up and we see this graph going back up. So just as I can take this graph and use the slope to produce this graph down here f primed I can take f primed down here and use the area under it to produce this original function f. So the slope of a graph at any point gives me another function which is the derivative of that and the area accumulated under a graph at any point gives me another function which is the antiderivative of that. So thinking about the slope gets me from here to here. Thinking about the area gets me from here to here. This is first semester calculus or differential calculus dealing with the slope of a function. This is second semester calculus over here or integral calculus. Think of it as conceptually going in the opposite direction. It's the reverse process of taking, taking the derivative. And this is amazing. This idea that the area under a graph is a function that can be graphed and that area itself that gets accumulated at different values of x gives us the antiderivative of, of a function that is the fundamental concept for second semester calculus just as first semester calculus is all about slope or derivatives that's differential calculus second semester calculus is all about area integrals integral calculus when I was younger I went to Switzerland
and it was amazing and I remember seeing the mountains the Alps in Switzerland the snow up on the peaks just beautiful just just stunning and I remember seeing the setting Sun just just illuminating the mountains just just beautiful and the, you could see the light reflecting off the snow on the peaks and Switzerland has these these beautiful lakes and you see the reflection of the mountains in the lakes this this little sketch here obviously is not doing it justice but it was it was incredible and um, I remember actually being disappointed not disappointed in the beauty of the scene that I was gazing on but but thinking to myself I wish I had come to Switzerland at the end of my life because everything else that I see is going to be anticlimactic by comparison it was it was so amazing that I couldn't imagine seeing anything that was more stunningly beautiful than what I was looking at right then now back to the calculus some of you might be having a similar experience right now you might be thinking wow this is amazing what could I possibly learn that could be more profound than this this is the key idea of second semester calculus if you grasp this in its depth and you may not right now although you will as we continue through this material but if you understand the significance of this picture right here that the area under the graph and plotting that as a function is the same as anti-differentiating that function then you understand the foundational concept of all of second semester integral calculus and you're thinking to yourself that is so stunning so profound what could I possibly learn that could be more significant than that everything else that I learn in my life is going to pale in significance compared to this well I am here to tell you today fear not as amazing as this is even better stuff is on its way this is the key idea that will lead us to the fundamental theorem of calculus which is coming up next